Welcome back to Not So Grand Garage. We are out in the shop tonight and working on this little kit car. It is an Austin Healey kit car that was built by, let's see here, Classic Roadsters, which has been gone for quite some time. So uh, parts and information on these things is pretty, uh, pretty hard to come by. But it is an Austin Healey style body. This fiberglass body on a tube chassis. It's got a Chevette running gear or drivetrain. So it's got a five speed transmission, Chevette four cylinder engine, which uh, I've worked on this thing a few times. We swapped it out to a uh, Weber carburetor setup and uh, got it running really good. Had to put an engine in it when, it, uh, when the owner first got it. But uh, yeah, so now it's out here due to typical kit car stuff, electrical issues, and uh, the exhaust system's practically falling off, and some other piddly stuff we gotta figure out. Uh, doesn't have functional horns or anything like that. So right now, we're working on lighting because the uh, taillights and stuff work, but nothing on the front works. So I'm gonna start pulling things apart up here, start checking wiring, electrical connections, see if we're getting power up here, see if we got, just got a ground issue maybe. Uh, but yeah, and uh, we'll just start working through it. Let's get at it. So I've got one of the front lights pulled and I went on and did a continuity test from ground to the chassis and to the battery, kind of to compare both, see where we were at. And the ground seems to be good. So I'm gonna go on and turn the headlight switch on and see if we're actually getting power to either side of this. And if we're not, that tells me I've either got a break between here and the switch or I've got a bad switch. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna check that out and see what happens. So I got the uh, headlight switch on, taillights are on, and this is dead. So I'm gonna start following this wiring back and see what we've got. I may go on and just jump in, climb up under the dash and see if we've got power coming off both sides of the headlight switch. Um, I would assume that the switch is good because the taillights and stuff are working, but uh, depends on what kind of switch it is and what kind of contact setup it's got. Uh, but it, the switch should be good. So more than likely, we've got a brake, or maybe this chassis has a fuse or a relay in line for the headlights and front lights. That I don't know. I don't have any wiring diagrams or anything for this car, so I'm gonna have to hunt for it. So uh, yeah, let's see what I can find. So after a little bit of digging, I think I found our issue. This is the headlight switch up here. And uh, yeah, this contact right here is broke off internally. So we need a switch. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to find one. But uh, there's several switches on this dash that appear to operate the same way as the headlight switch. But uh, we don't know what they do. So I'm probably, just for temporary sake anyways, gonna switch this switch here out for the headlight switch and uh, see if we can at least get the lights working and go from there. So, uh, working on the Healy, different day. Um, this has uh, escalated rapidly. Uh, let, me, uh, let me show you what I mean. So, this is a dash harness, if you want to call it that. Steering column harness, and I'm deleting, well, everything. 
Uh, here was the uh, central ground underneath the dash. So that's cool. But uh, yeah, this, uh, this turned into a pretty big ordeal because we got we got a whole lot of stuff like this just twisty taped together a lot a lot of stuff like that uh, and I'm currently pulling the harness the entire harness out of the car we've got the uh, plumber's putty for grommets so uh, that's cool guess it works uh, this is the harness to the front of the car which as you can see we got these were all bare just hanging out under the dash uh, these connections here I'm not even sure what this kind of stuff is these were just dangling loose under the dash some of them were taped some of them weren't most of them hot uh, this here is the uh, fuse block that was in this thing and uh, yeah I'm not uh, I'm not sure like what the idea here was uh, tying all these fuses together was you got one heavy gauge hot wire coming in there one heavy gauge hot wire down here you got two real light ones coming into where all these fuses are banked together and then you just got stuff tacked on everywhere and more of the same a lot of twisted wire connections like this one here i haven't opened this one so we'll uh see what that's got going on in it let's see here Oh, this might actually be a halfway decent connection. Oh, yeah, sort of. I mean, there's there's a dab of solder on it. But, uh, yeah, the whole harness is full of this. And to be honest, I don't know. Like, I found at least a half dozen uh, wires that were hot under the dash uh, just loose flopping around uh, that aren't fused they're right off the battery uh, we got more of the same back here with the rear lights just uh, wires hanging out twisted together same over here we got just wires cut and going nowhere so uh yeah I have no idea how this car didn't burn to the ground, but uh, somehow it didn't. But the more I found, the more I realized I wasn't gonna be uh, fixing this without a lot of time, tracing wiring and everything else. So I gave the owner a call, and after uh, about five minutes of explaining what I was looking at, uh, he decided to just give me the go ahead to put a new harness in the car. So ordered a pre-wired 21 circuit painless harness it'll come with a fuse block it's coming with the pigtails for the gm column that's in this thing and it's an extra long harness which probably didn't need but uh it was fairly cheap uh all things considered it's like 259 dollars something like that so it'll have a couple extra circuits that he won't need but uh it'll cover all the basics we'll have new wire nose to tail everything fresh and he shouldn't have anything to worry about plus everything will be fused the headlights will be on relays uh, and we're gonna correct a lot of the little electrical issues this car had but uh yeah i'm gonna continue cutting and pulling Let's see i got this one like i said i got this one already pulled out this one is everything for the front of the car the headlights and everything um, this one here is engine harness. This one here is to the rear of the car. This here goes to the engine. We got this stuff over here. Like, I, I don't even know what this, what this stuff is. Oh yeah, there we go. Just twisted together. 
<sighs> but uh, yeah, a lot more work to do. But uh, hey, it'll be right when it leaves here. So let's keep at it. All right, guys. So working on the underside of the car now, trying to strip the rear harness out. So I've got it disconnected from uh, from the through the firewall out from underneath the dash. <clears throat> But uh, I, I don't understand this. This car has four, four lights on the back of it. That's it. There's no electric fuel pump, no nothing. But we've got a harness this size running to the back of this car. And it's all twisted up around brake lines, which is great. Look at all this loose wiring ran back here. Multiple connections. I, I, I don't get it. What is all this for? There's nothing back here. Ugh. I don't. What is there? There's a ground wire. <laughs> uh, there's there's some kind of red wire just shot to the side of the shock mount. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. It runs to the trunk. It looks like. So that's that's rear light wiring. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Kind of at a loss for this one. But anyways, we're going to keep cutting and removing until it's all gone. Oh, well, finally got the uh, tail section of this harness removed and uh yeah i'm not i i, I don't know i don't understand <laughs> but uh yeah it was zip tied up along the brake lines and fuel lines and it is a cobbled together mess just like everything else so all that's left is the front harness which Really, up to this point, it isn't in bad shape, but I'm still going to rip it all out and replace it. So, uh, that'll all be new. And the, uh, the engine side of the harness, which I need to, uh, I need to dissect it and, uh, figure out where everything goes. I'm sure there's a wire that runs down to the solenoid on the starter we got wiring that runs over to the alternator we've got oil pressure sender uh, ignition module uh, coolant temp sensor choke so for the most part the hard part is done dissecting all this without uh, tearing anything up that i'm gonna have to reuse uh, certain connectors and everything that i'm gonna have to reuse and trying not to eliminate too much because there's things in the car that need to be there that weren't part of the factory harness like the uh, speakers that are tucked back in there radio over there i've got to keep in mind all of that but literally on the back of this thing you got a marker light stop and turn on both sides and a license plate light and that's it so why they needed this right here to run four lights or five lights one of which wasn't even hooked up i don't know i don't get it and what's sad is the harness on this thing uh the original harness was loomed really nice and in really good shape it just uh someone uh repaired it a few too many times but anyways uh tomorrow the harness should be here so we'll come back out here and start laying it out get it all stretched out get everything ran roughly to where it's going to go i am going to try to run all the wiring inside the car to better protect it uh, from rodents while the car's in storage and from weather and from drive shafts exhaust stuff like that 
And I think it'll be relatively easy because the inside of this car is uh, fairly simple. So we will probably pull the carpet loose, run a single loom back down along the door seal or along the transmission tunnel and back into the trunk for the rear lights. Uh, the front lights and the engine harness will go right back through the firewall holes that are already there. I've got grommets for those, so I'll actually put grommets in there. And, uh, yeah, and then pretty well routed the same way. Uh, there was some, some wiring and stuff that was real close to steering components and stuff like that. So we'll route it a little bit better and uh, protect it a little bit more. But, uh yeah uh really this car is basic uh you got high and low beam headlights you got turn signal marker lights on the front so four lights on the front five lights on the back a radio a horn uh and engine stuff and that's it there's nothing extra to this car so there is a blower motor which and wipers which that's easy enough the wiring's still there for those but yeah anywho i'm getting tired so I'll quit rambling and see y'all when we get back on it. Now, the real fun begins. <laughs> you got a whole lot of wiring to route in this little car. But uh, yeah, shouldn't be too bad. We're gonna start by opening that harness all the way up. I'm gonna clear some space out here. Gonna start laying everything out so i can start routing wiring where it needs to go and get the fuse block sort of tucked up under the dash where it's going to go and start routing wiring from there i'm not going to bore you too much with the routing process it's going to be time consuming so i'm not going to video a whole lot of it but uh yeah i'm going to get started and we'll see what happens so i've never used any of painless's harnesses it comes with a really nice manual very in-depth uh, also what I like is this was all bundled together it's kind of hard to tell if it was all separated out or not but took the main bundles off and each different section of the harness is still separated out so like you got left turn brake let's see tail section yeah tail section right here so this right here is the rear of the car let's see here hazard switch power dimmer switch so this is interior right here and this is likely the front of the car and the engine bay harness if i had to guess but uh yeah engine section and front section so pretty slick how it's all broke up. It's kept really neat and tidy. Uh, I do have loom. I'm just gonna use a standard split loom on this. Uh, but gonna get the block laid out roughly in place. Gonna be using the mounting bracket to come with the kit instead of just shooting it to the floor. And then we'll start routing wiring. Okay, so we've got our fuse block loosely mounted up under the dash and it is mounted to the uh, flat side here it's tucked behind the steering bracket so you won't be hitting it with your knees or anything kicking it with your feet and uh, it is loose right now in case I got to take it back down but we've got this harness here which is for the front of the car this is engine bay and all the front lights we've got this section right here which if you notice real compact little section it looks like a big bundle of wire it is just because of length but this here is the rear of the car this is everything this is fuel tank sending unit and all the lights on the back of the car and then this here is the biggest cluster and that is the dash harness so your headlight switch your dimmer switch your courtesy lights your gauge cluster everything else is right here but uh yeah i'm gonna start by taking this getting it i'm gonna go on and start putting it in a little bit of loom and i'm gonna work it back through the factory hole that's already in the firewall here so we can start routing it then again i may just take it up through here but uh yeah we'll uh 
we'll see what I come up with as far as routing because I want it clean, simple, and protected. So we'll see. So I got the front section of the harness split off, loomed, and routed where I'm going to take it. We are going to mount it up here with a uh, insulated clamp. So that'll be nice and tucked up here. We'll protect it and everything. We won't be uh, that way as we pass through things and everything else. Yeah, there's no chance of it getting damaged. But uh, we got it worked out to up here. And it's just laid out across the fender for now. Uh, I will be splitting this because there's the engine harness and the front light harness and the main battery power wire to the fuse block. And we've got the starter wire on here as well. So yeah, I will be separating this out, looming it all separately. But uh, I'm gonna go on and continue uh, routing the rest of the harness. That way I can mostly be done under the dash and uh, can start doing this stuff out here. I still haven't decided if I want to run the tail harness under the car or not. The factory routing was under the car. And I, it would be nice to avoid that, but I don't know with how small and tight this interior is, uh, there's no good place to route wiring to the back of the car. So I think going under the car may be the best bet. Uh, we'll see what I figure out here in a little bit. But uh, anywho, I'm going to keep going and see what happens. So, not sure if you can see it or not, but got the tail section, not this, but this right here, loomed and started. It's ran down through the firewall, and we are out down here. That section will wait until I can get the car up in the air a little bit. As you can see, this is far too long for this car. This car is a really short wheelbase, so... We're not gonna need a lot of this. I'll probably be cutting probably 10 foot of wire off of it. But uh, now, all that is left, as far as routing goes, is the uh, the under dash stuff, which is uh, probably just gonna wait till last. So I may go on here in a little bit and start routing the headlight wiring and engine bay wiring, start from the nose of the car and work my way back. And uh, hopefully we can get this cleaned up and wrapped up fairly quick. Uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot to it. We've got four lights up front. Uh, got a choke. Oil pressure sender, coolant temp sender, ignition stuff, alternator, starter. And that is it under the hood. And then we've got... Uh, the four tail lights and turns and uh, the sending unit in the back and then we can move on to the inside of the car I want to avoid crawling under the dash for a little bit as long as I can because I've spent far too much time under there as it is so anywho I'm gonna go in eat dinner and I'll be back out here later tonight so I got the front section of the harness fully loomed and routed I will be adding some uh, another clamp up here, and once I get everything else loomed, I'll be uh, bundling everything together real nice right here, so uh, the harness will all come out right at this point and uh, split off the directions it needs to go. But got it routed down around all the brake lines, away from the steering, down to the frame, and tied off all the way forward and up here. So now. I still have to, let's see. I still have the factory light harness in here. So I need to rip that out. I need to get rid of some of this other stuff. And uh, then we can go on and splice these wires, route them over to the lights and wire them in. And we need to wire in our horn as well. And then we'll be able to probably just move on to the engine side. Because uh, that shouldn't be very difficult. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, just routing everything and uh, making sure everything's nice and tight and clean. 
Uh, I don't want wire ran all over the place. I want it to look good and uh, be functional. That is the goal. So I'm gonna keep at it and uh, we'll see how far we get tonight. So I'm working on this uh, front harness, kind of hard to tell, but uh, splitting the light directions. This here is for the driver's side. All this here is for the passenger side. So I'm gonna split them off in separate looms here. But uh, I really like how this is. Not sure if you'll be able to tell, but every wire, about every six inches to a foot, is labeled for everything it goes to, making uh, this really nice. And yeah, change of clothes, because uh, I had to go in and hang out with the family, eat dinner. Now it's uh, laid out and uh, Actually, I'll take a step out here real quick because uh, we had something interesting going on. And, uh, not sure. Uh, you can't really see it on camera anymore. We're uh, getting the northern lights down by us for the uh, first time in a long time. But, uh, anyways, so working on the. Uh, Getting this split up and getting it reloomed, getting it routed. I'll go on and get the uh, plugs put on for this light, get the turn signals and stuff tied in, and get this front done. But uh, yeah, time to stop babbling and get to work. Huh? We've got all our wiring ran on the driver's side, and we've got the marker light hooked up, dual filament bulb, so turn and marker, and our Headlight pigtail is done and in. So next up is the passenger side. And uh, should be pretty straightforward. I got a couple grounds to make and hook up. And then the lighting on the front of the car will be completely done and we'll move on to the engine harness. Getting there. Front lights are all done. Now, onto this mess. So, we got our engine bay wiring pretty well wrapped up. Uh, I split the top side. I haven't uh, anchored all these yet, so they aren't tied up and uh, they're not in their final place. But this one here runs over. It is for the coolant temp, the choke, and the alternator. I did have to reuse a couple of the GM connectors, so I had to repin those, which wasn't a big deal. And then I got the lower section done, which was oil pressure sender, starter, and uh, the uh, coil pack stuff. But uh, yeah, engine bay is pretty well done, other than uh, the main power wire for the alternator and the main power wire for the fuse block. Which, I'm going to wait on those until everything else is done. So next up, I think I need to get the car up in the air, get the rear harness ran to the back, and get those lights buttoned up. And then we should be good to get under the dash and start the real fun part. But overall, this has been this this is time consuming, very time consuming to do it right. Uh, to make sure you're routing everything right, make sure you're getting good grounds, make sure all your connections you're making are good. The harness that I'm running uh, is very customizable and it comes with just all the terminal ends. So you have to terminate everything. So it takes time, but it's uh, it's coming along real nice. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work out really well. But anywho, I've got a fair bit of loom left. It should be enough to do the back of the car and a little bit under the dash. And uh, here is our rear harness. So I'm gonna finish looming it up. I'm gonna get the car up, get it on jack stands, and get it ran to the back, get it all tied up and supported the way it needs to be, and go from there. Well, we are uh, coming along slowly, but surely. Uh, working back here in the trunk, uh, kind of hard to see, but Got uh, everything tucked away as best I can. Um, got the rear lights all wired in. I do have some uh, 
some extra circuits I'm going to tie off it's reverse lights third brake lights stuff like that but uh, yeah that's all wrapped up and in here uh, let's see here you'll notice that I don't have a big ball of wiring laying here anymore I got a little bit left over there from the radio but I do have a fair bit of cleanup to do. I need to tuck all this up and finish mounting and securing the block. And uh, overall, just do some cleanup. But uh, yeah, everything up here is functional now, or at least uh, wired in. Headlight switch, wiper controls, uh, functional horn, things like that. So. All that is left to wrap up is the fuel level sender, and we've got lights right here and on the other side. That uh, the wiring for those is under the car, so I'm going to climb under there and tie those in, and then I think we will. Be ready to apply power to everything and start testing making sure everything's working as it should uh, i believe all of our grounds are done yeah so this has been a very very time consuming project uh, i'm over 30 hours in it so far and that seems like a lot and seems kind of uh Wait, why? Why would it take 30 plus hours to do this? Well, I mean, when you include removing all of this, and then when you include uh, hand crimping uh, every terminal, you gotta keep in mind, this is a universal kit that I'm running on this car. So, well, nobody's going to make a factory factory harness for this thing that would just drop in and be uh, quick. So, every termination has to be, uh, all the wiring ran, length determined, and every uh, plug for, like, headlights, taillights, all of that, each end has to be crimped on, has to be snapped into their terminal blocks and things like that. It's time-consuming. And you wouldn't think that, but it is. The dash alone, uh, hours in it. Uh, daisy chaining grounds and lights and indicator lights and gauge senders and everything else and routing everything where it made sense and would be relatively easy to work on later. Um, I mean, it just, it takes a lot. But uh, yeah, is it difficult? No, just uh, expect to invest time if you're going to do it right. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep at it. Get underneath this thing. You really won't be able to see what I'm doing under there anyways because the lighting kind of sucks. But you get under there, wrap that up, and then we'll put power to everything and see what we've got to work with. I'm wrapping this up slowly but surely the block is mounted I got the wiring harness secured with an insulated clamp got everything routed the way it needs to be and we have power hooked up over here I don't have the main fuse mounted yet but that's not a big deal uh, we got power to the fuse block and uh, yeah, we're gonna go through and start testing things. So, first up, we've got gauge lighting. Come on and click that all the way on, which we've got headlights now. Come around here, markers. And we've got markers back here. Hmm. Ah. Got 
dash indicator. We've got turn signals. Right side. Left side. So, and actually, we got uh, we got high beams working. Let's turn that off. We got a horn that works. We've got wipers that work. We are moving right along. Now, uh, let's see here. Move some stuff out of the way. Let's see if we've got a starter. Okay, we've got a starter. We're gonna give her a couple. Running. We got oil pressure. We got a tachometer. That's a first. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna check and see if it's charging because I did not hook up a charging indicator. But uh, other than that, I think we're good. Well, it looks like we've got everything functional. Uh, I did go on and disconnect the ground with everything off. I'm not getting any current flow, which is what I was looking for. So we've got no draws on the electrical system anymore. All of our lights are working, indicators are working, all the gauges are working. Uh, it starts right up, so, and uh, all the sensors and everything under the hood are working as they should. We've got a charging system, if I didn't mention that. So, yeah, now uh, I've got a bunch of little piddly things to do yet. Get all this mess cleaned up. Uh, I've got little bits of wiring and everything strung everywhere. All my tools. Get all that out. Get the car vacuumed out. Uh, get the trunk vacuumed out. Uh, I still need to service it and do some other piddly stuff. I got an exhaust hanger to fix and things like that. I'm not gonna bore you all with that. Yeah, this has been a long project, but uh, I think it's well worth it in the end because now the owner of this car won't have any electrical issues to worry about uh, for a long time to come. This mess up here, was a fire waiting to happen how it didn't happen i don't know but uh yeah he won't have that to worry about anymore and uh as long as he keeps up on uh keeping it serviced and keeping the piddly things in check this thing should be on the road for a long time with that said i am going to wrap this one up if you got any comments questions complaints drop them in the comment section below try to answer those as quick as I can uh, if you would hit that thumbs up button helps out quite a bit and doesn't cost you anything if you want to support the channel uh, we got a PayPal account set up we can check out the website uh, we got our merch black diesel gear it's www.notsograndgarage.com with that said if you haven't already please subscribe we appreciate you watching